Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with a uh, demonstration from Chapter 6 of Heck et al.'s book, uh, Multi-Level and Longitudinal Modeling with IBM SPSS. And the demonstrations within this chapter, the authors were um, modeling, it was essentially, they were carrying out a three-level, multi-level model with repeated measurements at level one. The repeated measurement at level one was graduation proportion associated with four-year institutions. Um, and the repeated measurements, those proportions were um, uh, measured over a span of 11 years. So, um, so the grad proportion variable is the repeated measurement. Those repeated measurements are nested within uh, institutions, um, or four-year institutions, uh, which in turn are nested within uh, different states. Uh, the variables that they are the identifiers at level two and level three were these two variables right here. And um, we also, so uh, in the first video within the series, uh, I uh, modeled an unconditional uh, uh, multi-level model where essentially there were no predictors of variation and students' graduation proportions, or the graduation proportions uh, for the institutions within those, those years. Um, so we were essentially breaking down the variation and graduation proportion uh, into um, into um, you know at the different levels so at level one level two and level three so the next uh, video I incorporated time as a predictor variable uh, so the original time variable was, was recoded um, to reflect an alternate coding system and um, basically uh, time the initial time point was uh, z you know zero the final time point is one and on the original variable it was zero to ten so this was our predictor variable in uh, the last video and so we were modeling growth curves in terms of uh, graduation proportion um, uh, across the institutions and uh, across the states so now we're going to go a little bit further and we're going to add in percentage of financial aid or percentage of students uh, receiving financial aid um, within each of the years associated with the, each institution nested within each state. We also have tuition levels or tuition rate as well um, that's a, so that can vary across years as, uh, uh, as well. You'll notice that uh, some of these values are negative, some are positive, that's because these were grand mean centered. So we're going to include these two variables as time varying covariates of grad proportion. So to carry out our analysis, we're just going to go back to mixed models linear, and you'll see we've got our uh, our uh, institution and state level identifiers. We have a variable uh, uh, kind of serving as an index variable for the repeated um, uh, factor, which is time. Uh, the repeated covariance type is uh, autoregressive one structure. So uh, under a dependent variable, we have our grad proportion. Uh, and the covariate is the time one variable that we have right here. Under fix, we have time one uh, also noted. Under random, we have um, essentially um, for um, the first random effect, this is going to be for uh, states, and we're going to be modeling uh, the randomly varying intercepts and slopes for the time one uh, uh, predictor uh, across uh, states. Uh, the covariance type is going to be a diagonal. So in other words, we're going to estimate the uh, variance of the uh, intercepts and the variance of the slopes um, um, separately, and, but we're not assuming any type of covariance between the intercepts and slopes um, across uh, the, the state. So we're not uh, making that assumption. Under uh, random effect two, we're, we've now got our, our RID variable and state ID variable. Um, so now we're essentially modeling the random variation and in intercepts, oops, intercepts and slopes for time across institutions. And we're also sticking with a diagonal covariance type. So this is basically the covariance type at level two, and this is the covariance type uh, essentially at level three. Um, all right, so now, uh, also under estimation, it was restricted maximum likelihood statistics. We've asked for, um, you know, parameter estimates, tests, and uh, covariances of random effects. So now we're going to add in our predictor variables. So we've got um, our tuition variable, and uh, we're going to add in the percentage of students uh, receiving financial aid. We're going to move that over as well. Under fixed, we're going to move um, tuition 
percentage of financial aid over, continue, and then click on OK. So now we have um, our, our basic model uh, that you see right here. And um, in this particular case, Okay, so uh, looking at our output, we can see um, in terms of um, our, our uh, growth factor time one, we still see that it's positive uh, and statistically significant, indicating that uh, the proportion of students graduating um, uh, was uh, increasing um, in a linear fashion significantly over, um, over the 11 year span. Uh, tuition, you can see it's a, a positive predictor, 0.049 and statistically significant. And what this indicates basically is that um, when tuition rates uh, tended to be higher, uh, there was also an increase in the proportion of students graduating. Um, then when we look at percentage of financial aid, we see that that's a positive coefficient as well. And um, you know, not significant at the conventional 0.05 level, but um, you know, um, you know, um, if we adopted a little bit more liberal alpha, that you know, then that would have been significant. But basically, this is just indicating that when the uh, percentage of financial aid uh, tended to be higher, we also observed a greater proportion of students graduating. Uh, looking down at the estimates of covariance parameters, uh, we have the autoregressive um, uh, element right here um, in terms of the um, the variance. Um, of the errors, so you can see that that's still statistically significant. The autoregressive component, uh, it's this right here, and that's significant. Uh, when it comes to the variance in the uh, intercepts across states, you can see that uh, it was statistically significant. So maybe there are state level variables or factors that may help to explain uh, the variation in the uh, intercepts for grad proportion across the states. Uh, but the slope uh, for the time one <coughs> um, growth um, curve factor um, did not vary across the states. When it comes to the level two um, uh, random uh, coefficients, you can see that we have uh, the variance of the intercepts at level two was statistically significant, meaning that um, that there's um, you know there's variance to be had in terms of the graduation proportion across institutions that may be explained, and then there's also um, um, the level uh, the slope um, for time in its relationship to graduation proportion uh, that appears to vary significantly across institutions as well. So um, basically, what this this translates into is that we may be able to add in. A level three predictor of the variation in intercepts. Um, we're probably not going to uh, get any benefit from trying to model a cross level, you know, cross level interaction in terms of um, of um, variation across states in terms of uh, time. Uh, we can add in a level two predictor of variation in intercepts, uh, as well as potentially a cross level interaction variable that might help to explain variation across institutions in terms of the uh, growth trajectories. So that's sort of a quick overview of um, this demonstration using um, by incorporating time-varying covariates into our model.